All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 8th day of January, the day after Orthodox Christmas. Uh, I hope all you, uh, my brethren on the uh, the east side of the world, sort of, <laughs> had a uh, Christ-filled holiday. Maybe in the, in the United States, I would, next year, maybe I will move Christmas to the 7th for my family simply because I hate the commercialism. Although I doubt I could get my extended family to go along with that. But personally, as for me and my house, yeah, we might. I told my wife yesterday, you need to, uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, what? I, you know, my entire Christian life as a born-again Christian, I've been fighting Christmas. I've been fighting the, the commercialization, the world, what they do to it. And it's just disgusting. So sometimes the best way to do is just let them destroy the the winter solstice, let it go back to its pagan roots, and worship Christ on a better day. And I'd have plenty of company, I suppose. Even there, there is not a Greek Orthodox church or an Orthodox church in this community, so. Uh, or around this, this is not that kind of an area in Illinois. There are not too many here. Uh, I'm not going to drive to Chicago. I think it's, well, it's like 50 or 60 miles for anyway. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit, well, orthodoxy is odd to me. I have no real experience with it. And difficulty understanding it. But I could understand it if I tried. I tried. Um, it's I don't know enough about it to say anything about it, really. Anyway, I, there was a thing that came out. Uh, the what's this, the date on this? The sixth on. Catholic a news agency uh, here, and it says, this is the on Twitter X. So they have an article on this that if you want to click on this, you can find it. Catholic news uh, agency dated the 6th of January. In his homily Saturday for the solemnity of the Epiphany, Pope Francis urged the faithful to find God in flesh and bone. Well, the epiphany is about that, isn't it? Christ becoming man, God becoming man, and dwelling among us. Emmanuel. In, find God in flesh and bone, comma. In the faces of those we meet each day, and especially in the poor. This is heretical. This is heretical. It sounds so pious and nice, doesn't it? It is heretical. Find God in flesh and bone, in the faces of those we meet each day. So people we meet each day, people in general, and especially in the poor, in general, not brothers and sisters in Christ, then it would be acceptable. But that's not what it says. Do we find God in everyone? Does Christ dwell in all people? No, he does not. That is not Orthodox Christianity of any form. That is something else. That is what Francis is. Francis is a pagan. Francis is apparently a uh, pantheist. Francis is apparently a follower. 
I suspect, of this man, a Jesuit priest slash paleontologist named Pierre, uh, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, who died in 1955, a Jesuit, and his uh, apparently, from what uh, Wikipedia says, in an article called The Omega Point, which is from this guy, uh, that the Jesuit order changed over from their traditional theology of a man named Suarez in 1962 to the uh, cosmic evolutionary theology of this guy. By the way, this guy was in 1962 was also... Uh, his teachings were not quite condemned by the Vatican, but put on the no-no list, whatever that is, uh, a list of unapproved for teaching materials. In other words, not the, not a complete ban, but uh, considered not good. And uh, they condemned some of the ideas of, of these things, these books. Uh, uh, he wrote two books, published some papers then. But these are the two books. The first one was written, uh, when was this, 1926 and 27, uh, The Divine Melieu. And he wrote, began to read, uh, write this book in that period while he was uh, in... Man, not Manchuria. What is that? Is it Manchuria? I think it's Manchuria. Uh, Mongolia, Mongolia, uh, between Siberia and China, north of China there, doing uh, uh, paleontology work. He was a Darwinist. So some of the ideas in these books were condemned as being heretical. But not uh, the man wasn't condemned as being heretical. I suspect Francis is a disciple of this or holds ideas similar to this. These ideas are were condemned as being uh, pantheism, and they are. And pantheism and atheism is really the same thing. You don't have a personal god. Uh, the dominant religion in uh, Mongolia is Buddhism. It is Buddhism. And Buddhism has been described as atheism, but it's not quite atheism. Their idea of the ultimate reality or God or whatever you want to call it is not personal. And atheism is really a denial not of everything, not of every concept of deity, but it's a denial of the personal God. Christians believe in a personal God. The God who is a person, is a personal being. Of course, the Trinity, we speak of three persons, but we speak of one God. Islam traditionally uh, holds to a personal God. Uh, there are fractions or factions in Islam that may not. Uh, Sufi Islam is... And maybe borderline. I'm not an expert on it, but I suspect there may be uh, ideas of experiencing God that are consistent with Buddhist ideas. Lots of influence has come into the United States. Lots of influence into Roman Catholicism has come in from Buddhism. Certain priests and others are brought in. The idea of centering prayer. If you're a Catholic and you've heard of centering prayer, that is Buddhism, that is Eastern mysticism, that is not Orthodox Christianity. The idea of looking within yourself and experiencing God. In Eastern mysticism, Buddhism, Hinduism, the idea of enlightenment uh, that was brought to the United States in the 1960s, uh, and the, the Beatles who had their, their yogi that they followed. Uh, the idea of enlightenment is through meditation or other techniques, including drugs, you can come to a state of consciousness where you realize that everything is God, including yourself.
that all is God, everything that's pantheistic, uh, and you're part of it. You're part of God. You're God. Everybody else is God. Everything is God, including a brick is God. Everything is God. Where's my brick? I had a brick out here. I've got a brick around here, but I don't know where I put it now. So everything is God. This calculator is God. This cup of coffee is God. Everything is God. That's pantheism. Something related is called panentheism, and that is God is in everything. This is pantheism or panentheism. They, they come to, but pantheism, because there's no distinctions, you could, you could think of it perhaps as like the God of the, the force of Star Wars. It's an impersonal being. And in pantheism, all is the being. Everything is the being. Um, and that's basically sort of like this. This is a little more complicated because the idea of God evolving and creation evolving into God and Christ didn't rise physically from the dead, but rather rose and incarnated himself, transubstantiated himself into all things, into all matter. Uh, see where transubstantiation can lead to? Uh, the idea that God can become bread. I mean, God can't become bread. It can't. You could take on the appearance of bread, but it can't actually become bread. Uh, and, of course, in transubstantiation, he doesn't really himself become bread. The bread becomes God. The substance of it. It's but the, this is a pagan idea that goes back to Aristotle. So you use Aristotle's language, you're opening the door to the devil, uh, and it, it's it can lead to these kind of thoughts. And in the imagination of of uh, Teilhard de Chardin, it did. So he's a, dev a devotee of Darwin of Darwinian evolution. He's a paleontologist. He doesn't believe in the, the, the in Genesis as far as being factual history. Uh, many people don't. So he wants to hold all these things together, and he creates this imaginary mess that he writes about. And he just says, this is my imagination. This is his ideas. But they allow you to do whatever you want with what you call Christianity. He's a Jes He was a Jesuit. And Francis was a Jesuit, and this guy apparently, his ideas were coming into vogue among the Jesuits at the very time Francis was becoming a Jesuit, was in, in Jesuit school or whatever you want to call it. Uh, he joined the Jesuit order in 1958. Uh, this guy died in 55 by 1962, according to a Wikipedia article. Uh, the Jesuits had embraced this theology. And it is consistent with what Francis has done. It's consistent with, with what Francis says here, that we can see God in flesh and bone, find God in flesh and bone, in the faces of those we meet each day, especially in the poor. Well, God in flesh and bone can only be spoken of in a somewhat sense in Christ himself. Even in Christ, there is a distinction. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Technically, we cannot say, I'm not formally trained, I've just self-taught in this stuff. But God has given me an ability to understand things. Um, insight into these things, I guess. I don't want to take credit for it. I don't have a degree in anything, so. I'm just a country preacher. And it was an engineer, too. <laughs> Don't have a degree in that, either. Uh, but you can't, even in Christ, we don't confuse the, the human side of Christ with the divine side. Theologians, because the Scripture doesn't allow us to do this, we talk, a, a theologians use a term, a label for this mystery called the hypostatic union. 
that God and man are joined in one person who is Jesus Christ. And there was a lot of heresies about this. I'm doing heresies because they're like, how do we interpret this? It's not like manifestly denying the deity of Christ or the, or the humanity of Christ. But how do we explain this? And when you get beyond the language of Scripture, Scripture says God became, uh, the, the Word, the Lagos, who is God, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. We have the incarnation. Uh, the Holy Spirit overshadows Mary, conceived of Mary, of the seed of woman. So you have human, true humanity uh, it, it, from Mary, her, her seed, combined with deity, and you end up with the God-man, Christ. And the theologians over the, uh, the ages, because you can't do otherwise, if you go in beyond this, so a lot of things that theologians may say, I agree with, but I don't agree with giving authority over Scripture to what they come up with. So it's only a deduction from Scripture, but it's a human deduction. So it, it's not the same as the Word of God. Uh, we can just say what the Bible says. So the idea is that if you, uh, the different ideas about how man and God are related and Christ came about and the church has rejected those ideas for various reasons, uh, and I believe correct reasons. But the idea, it came down to be called the hypostatic union that talk about this thing where, where God and man are not confused. They're, they're not mixed. There's a, there's a, there maintains a separation between the creator and the creature. In Christ, it's, in the person of Christ, you have both the creator, God, and the creature, man. In the reunion that God apparently meant from the beginning. And what we will be conformed to in some sense, I, I tend to think personally that Christ is, because he is a mediator between God and man, uh, that Christ talks about in John 17 about uh, the unity between Christians and God. And he says that uh, about himself and the Father, I and you and you and me, and they and me and I and them. So he's in the media, uh, the mediator there too. So I, that might be the eternal condition too. We don't know enough to go too far, other than we know that he is the firstborn of many brethren, and when he comes, we will be glorified together with him and be conformed to his image and see him as he truly is, because we will be like him. The Scripture plainly teaches that. The Apostle Paul plainly declares that. Ah, blessed day. <laughs> and it looks like that's going to happen fairly soon, not 10,000 years from now. Their human race is not going to last much longer the way it's going. All kinds of factors uh, that indicate that. Natural factors, sin human sinfulness, everything seemed to point to a, a climax, an end of this age. Not an end of existence, an end of this age. Anyway, Francis seems to be what we could call a pantheist, the easiest way to describe it. But uh, T.R., basically the idea was Jesus rose from the dead. He did not raise, rise in a human body. He uh, transubstantiated or incarnated himself into all creation, into all matter. So everything is now Christ. So when you look at another person, regardless of whether they're Christian or not, they are God in flesh and bone. Now, again, you, we can't even talk about Christ that way, exactly that way, because there is a distinction between the human nature of Christ and the divine nature of Christ, and they're not mixed. So... We can find God dwelling in flesh and bone, but God is not the flesh and bone. Where there's, this, there's a distinction in Christ between man and God. And we need to, we, we, if we 
violate that distinction, we can fall into pantheism, which is what Francis has done, apparently. So when we look at other people that aren't, and Jesus said you must be born again, you must be born of the Spirit. By normal birth, by natural birth, we are not born of the Spirit. That's the whole point in John chapter 3. We must be born of the Spirit in order to see the kingdom of God, in order to be in the kingdom of God, in order to be in, we have to be in Christ. Christ must be in us. We must have that, and the new birth comes through faith in Christ. Without that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the brother and sister of a person that it does not have the Spirit of God. Only those in whom Christ is our unity. He's our koinonia. He's our common possession. For Christians alone, you must be born again. If you're not born again, you're not my brother or sister, uh, really. You may, you're my fellow, a fellow human being, but you're not my brother and sister in the same sense. As a Christian, a true Christian is my brother or sister, biblically. Francis tears that distinction down. Oh, everybody, everybody, and especially the poor. No, there's a lot of very wicked people out there that are poor. They're not my brothers and sisters simply because they're poor. Francis doesn't care. Everything is God. Everything is Christ. If this is his basic theology, that makes sense. Pantheism makes sense. And pantheism and atheism are really the same thing. Let me show you something else that occurred to me while I was thinking about this. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, this is Paul is talking about the last days here. And he's talking about the return of Christ. He says, I'll start here in verse 1 of chapter 2. Now, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. He's talking about the resurrection and what's called the rapture which is simply those who are alive when Christ returns, that they will not pass through death, but be instantly transformed in, uh, without dying. Paul talks about this in 1 Thessalonians. He says, uh, talks about a mystery that, that he's disclosing, that we shall not all die. So, <clears throat> so he's talking about our gathering together to him. When he returns, we will be gathered together to him. That he'll come with the, the departed saints. They will first be bodily raised from the dead, and then we who are alive and left will be caught up to meet him in the air, and we'll be transformed in the twinkling of an eye into the image of Christ, along with the others. See, they, if you're in heaven now, you don't have a body. You haven't been raised from the dead yet. That's when Christ returns. He says, concerning that event, do not be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away, the apostasy, comes first. Are we seeing an apostasy today? Yeah, oh, yes, we are. Jesus, in chapter 24 of Matthew, he gives two major signs. He talks about plagues and, and, and uh, earthquakes and wars and wars, rumors of wars, but he says these things must take place, but the end is not yet. So those are just events that happen, well, generally over the last 2,000 years. But he's, he's saying that he gives two things that have to take place. One is that there's a, going to be an explosion of lawlessness. Lawlessness will multiply in this world. And two, because of that, there will be a, uh, that many, many, maybe the, the majority, I would say, based on the original language, the majority of Christians will fall away from the faith. Are we seeing that? Yes, we are. At least the beginning of that. 
we're seeing an explosion of lawlessness in society, in government, everywhere. And we're seeing not just among common people, but in government, how, how lawless the government of the United States is, how lawless the, the governments in Europe are. It's just crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's not uniformly across the world, but it's mostly in the West, in what used to be called Christendom, generally speaking, especially the West, Western Christendom. Uh, so he says, do not be deceived by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, the apostasy. The Greek word is apostasia, literally the... To, it means to switch sides. It means to go over to the other side. It doesn't mean simply to not believe any longer. It means to change your, your side, change your allegiance. And the man of sin is revealed, or the man of lawlessness, depending on your uh, what Greek source they translate from. Mo modern Bibles tend to read man of lawlessness, but it comes down to the same thing. Now this is commonly interpreted as a single individual, but the Greek can also say, it can be, uh, talk about the man of sin as, or man of lawlessness, as a category of people. A category of people. As Jesus said, the multiplication of lawlessness. The, a category of people. People be, be the lawless ones, the sinful ones. You could even say the children of Adam. Or it, it, can, it also can mean a particular individual. But the context, I think, would go for the first. Or both. It can mean both. Uh, the man of sin is revealed. So the man, if it's an individual, it's of the category, too. Because lawlessness, it's just like the... Uh, uh, Paul doesn't use the term antichrist. John is the one that uses the term antichrist. And he says, many antichrists have risen. So Antichrist is not a particular individual, a one-time particular individual, but a whole category of people, people that are anti, they're against or substitute for Christ. Anti means both, either against or and, or and a substitute for, like vicar, vicarious Christi. Literally would be translated in Greek as antichristos. So the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of prediction, a prediction or the son of destruction, which is a, a, a term used of Judas Iscariot, by the way, uh, who opposes. So this is what does this person or category of people do? Opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or is worshipped. So he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Uh, or displaying himself that he is God. Uh, this is ref can be actually translated several ways. So. It occurred to me this morning that a pantheist does this, or an atheist does this. Again, because the Christian or biblical idea of God is a personal God. So uh, if someone opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, and again, this is God in the, uh, in the biblical sense, and a pantheist, it's not really God. It is just all. It is creation. It is everything that exists. That's the is is the one. It's not a personal deity. It it doesn't act like a person. It doesn't act like the God of the Bible. It's not something you can be in relationship to. It is a thing. It is it, it cannot relate to people. It's it's the God of Aristotle. It's impossible for it to relate to human beings. It's actually impossible for that God to create anything. 
Uh, it's it simply is, and it's nothing else. So it's not a uh, God in a biblical sense. So you exalts himself above all that is called God. It's like an atheist does. An atheist des denies a personal deity. So that he sits in as God in the temple of God, showing himself or showing displaying himself as uh, that he is God or as being God. Uh, does the Pope do this? If he's a pantheist, yes. Yes. Uh, if all things are God, you're denying the existence of, of the God of the Bible. If you're denying, uh, see, see the, the idea of a personal God or objects of devotion if all people are the image of God, as the Pope's um, statement seems to indicate, that that God, we can find God in flesh and bone, in all people, apparently, that we meet each day, especially in the poor, people in general. So he's saying here that people in general are God in flesh and bone. They are just like Christ. They are manifestations of God in flesh and bone, God incarnate in everyone, including people that don't believe in the God of the Bible, that don't believe in Jesus Christ. Does that tell you a lot about, does that explain why Francis does what Francis does? Does it explain the Pachamamas, the bringing the pagan idols? The turning the, the, the bread of the mass into wheat and turning the, the cup of wine, is supposed to be the blood of Christ, into the waters of the Amazon. Does it explain things? It's all God. And God is nothing. And God is everything. God is not a personal God at all. God couldn't have died on the cross for your sins. Because it's not everything is God. It just, does that make sense out of Francis? I think it does. I think it does. The cardinals and the bishops, they need to take a look at that. Is Francis a pantheist? Because a pantheist denies the God of the Bible. This statement, supplicans, fiducia supplicans, denies the Scripture denies the God of the Bible. Pachamama denied the God of the Bible. Laudato Si denies the God of the Bible. It's a pantheistic document. It's about worshiping the creation rather than the creator. See, for a pantheist, there is no distinction between the, crea the, the creation and the creator. They're all this, they're all whatever. Whatever you want to call it, God or the the thing or the one. It's a Buddhist mindset. And where did Teilhard de Chardin, the Jesuit, pan, pa, paleontologist and so-called theologian, start to write his books in Mongolia, a Buddhist country? He blended all kinds of ideas together in his head, but they're not Christian. I think that's what we have in Francis, a person who is not a Christian. And Vigano would say, yeah, he's not, is he? No, he's not. But I think the, the, the cardinals and the bishops that are opposing him need to look at at Francis, as far as what does he believe? Who is he really? Because he does not believe, you know, he makes a statement like this all the time. This is this is not unusual for Francis. It just happened to be the, uh, the, the other day, the sixth, that we can find God in flesh and bone in the faces of those we meet each day, especially in the poor. 
Well, that sounds like a nice, pious, loving statement, doesn't it? Until you look at it carefully. Can we truly find God, the God of the Bible, in all people? Well, liberalism would say yes, but they, they rejected the God of the Bible. If this, I assume Francis wasn't doing this off the top of his head, but reading from a statement, maybe a statement his monkey wrote, we find, urge the faithful to find God in flesh and bone. So this denial also denies the uniqueness of Christ. Christ is the only begotten Son. He is God-made flesh in a unique way. And if we can find the same thing in everybody, that's a denial of the Christ of the Bible. It is a denial of the God of the Bible. It's an absolute denial of Scripture. Somebody else, oh, you're making too much of that. Yeah, but it's consistent with everything else Francis does and says. The Pachamamas, the Dado Sea, everything. And now blessing gay unions, same-sex unions. It's consistent. It's a denial of Christianity. Yes, and as Vigano said, France, uh, Bergoglio, and his accomplice, his monkey, are seeking to destroy the church from within. Not just the Roman Catholic Church, Christianity as a whole. To convert it into paganism, pantheism, atheism, because it reduces to the same thing. If everything is God, nothing is God. Right and wrong collapse in pantheism to the same thing. Just like the, the force of Star Wars. What was there? There was the good side of the force and the bad side of the force. But it was all the one force. It was just how you used it. What side you tapped into. Just like witchcraft. There's white witches and black witches. White magic and black magic. But it all comes from the same source. It's just how you use it. This is not biblical Christianity. This is not the faith delivered once for all unto the saints. This is not the faith of the apostles. We need to understand that. They did not say what Francis says find God in flesh and bone in the faces of those we meet every day, and especially in the poor. He is beyond a heretic. He is seeking to destroy Christianity. He is destroying, by this statement here, Christ himself. Christ, the unique Son of God. In, the, in, a, in a sermon on Epiphany, it is about the incarnation of God in Christ. Destroying it all by a few words. We know who stands behind the Pope and his monkey. It is Satan himself. Satan is the one who is the arch enemy of God, and the one who destroy, wants to destroy every single Christian because he hates us because we are God's workmanship. And we will judge Satan and his angels along with Christ. And he knows he has but a short time. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, because that is the answer. Ultimately, that is our hope, the return of Jesus Christ, because he must win this war, and he will finish this war. 